Aussies turn Christmas on its head. Santa suits in summer, cold ones around the Christmas tree, and forget about snow, we've got glow. We love our Christmas lights. Like no one else on earth. I think I do have an addiction to lights. I'd say definitely, yes. Over the years, it has become an obsession. If there's a Christmas shop around, Jan's got to go visiting. I just spend money like it's going out of style. Not that I'm, I'm a rich person or anything. We buy millions of them. This year, about 85,000 lights. It's got about 20,000 lights. We put them up all over Australia. I like Christmas. I'd be on the Christmas freak, I don't know. <laughs> In this particular bus, there's probably about 300 lights. We go high tech. This one controls the mega tree. <laughs> Old school. I think the favourite one was part of Christmas and the Christmas tree, really. And everything in between. <laughs> oh, isn't it pretty? We just about covered every spot we can cover within the house. For the next 90 minutes, we'll celebrate our obsession with lights. Check out our best and brightest. Hello, Mrs. Claus. Hello, Mr. Claus. And we'll follow one of Australia's most loved Christmas streets as they count down to their biggest ever light spectacular. An Aussie Christmas. When we're not hitting the beach, or staking up the barbie, we're beavering away in our front yard, stringing up the world's best light shows. It's become a national obsession, growing bigger every year. And nowhere is that obsession more obvious than on this street in Sydney. For 48 weeks of the year, it looks just like any other Aussie neighbourhood. But for four weeks over Christmas, a miracle happens on 2nd Street. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Didn't you have lights throughout the garden last year? I think you had lights amongst all the flowers. I specifically bought my house in this street because I wanted to be part of the Christmas lights. When it came up for sale, I just thought, wow, I've been visiting Christmas light streets for 10 years and, and I would love to be in a street to do it, which is probably a bit weird, but that's, that's how I felt. A couple of sets of lights to check. Wow. Check these up the hallway, eh? I first found out about Christmas lights on, on our first date. <laughs> it was a different conversation that you'd have in, on your first date. More than 60 families light up their homes to create the biggest and brightest street in Australia. I was born in the street, so I'm 83 at the moment. Well, the yes. Christmas displays, they've been getting done for quite a number of years. Hello, Rose, and Bo, how are you? You're so cute. Laurie, the mystery Santa, goes and puts little pieces of paper in everybody's letterboxes and says, put your lights on on this time, or I'll be around going crook. Laurie McGinty's mum and dad started the tradition nearly a quarter of a century ago. Dad and mum love the idea of sharing Christmas with more people um, and share that joy and fun. Now, Laurie and neighbour Brian Sharrick take the tradition very seriously. I've lived here 23 years and I've been mowing lawns about that long with, uh, with Laurie, or actually sometimes his dad. They work together to get the street's verges looking trim. In the summer, it's almost every week, especially with the lead up to Christmas. And the good thing is, if it doesn't look good, it'll look good a week later. That's true. <laughs> That's true if we cut it too short. Yeah, a bit, a bit like a haircut, yeah. yeah. And people appreciate it. They come and say thank you and, you know, it's about being neighbourly and helping people out, and that's, that's what it's about. This year, Second Street's going all out to be the biggest and best in the country. So we need to look at what decorations and lights we're going to do this year. Yep. So here's last year's plan. 
Brian and his new Mrs Jen have big plans for this year. We might even be able to, to possibly put some lights down there and have the Merry Christmas sign there. With our Christmas lights, our style will be the simple but elegant and pretty. You don't need to cover every corner of the house in lights to make it have that aspect and feel about it. It's about people looking at what we do here and enjoying what we do. So if we hang something there, as you said... That'll match. Go well with yeah. that. On 2nd Street, you need to have a darn good excuse not to get into Christmas lights. Even if you've just moved in. It was funny, when we were signing the lease for the house, the real estate agent actually asked us if we were aware about the Christmas lights, and I wasn't quite sure what she meant at the time. This will be Megan Lawrence's first 2nd Street Christmas. The main competition will be with the neighbours and competing with them. You know, they've had several years to buy lots of lights. She's determined to make a good impression. I did go to art school and so I do get quite inspired by the idea of putting on a display at the front of the house. So I've been thinking a lot about how we could do that in a creative way and I often find myself in the shower thinking about the lights <laughs> and what I'm going to do and I suddenly realise that it is consuming me a little bit. Yeah, I'll pass them up, boy. Foot on the right, yeah. Down up. Sick and Street might still be drawing up their Christmas light plans. But in Canberra, one Christmas fan is already supercharged. Crazy Phil. Green go around to the arbor. I'll get the purple out and we run the purple room. It started off with just Santa going down the chimney and then a set of lights and then another set of lights and then it escalated out of control and that's where we've got all the stuff that we have today. And that's why they call me Crazy Phil with all my lights. Phil Jensen has been going bananas about lights for 15 years. Every year, they've been getting bigger and bigger. On the roof, the display is made up of a two metre long sleigh with Santa Claus in it. There's all the reindeers, they're all fibre optic, a snowman. There's every toy, hopefully, you can imagine is will be in the front yard, plus the whole yard's covered in snow. Phil's a brickie. He can build anything. So he does. We have three metre high candy canes. All our bushes are covered in multi-lights. Mauves, greens, whites, blues. So it's pretty spectacular. We think this year we've only got 85,000 lights. We'd have to do a double check on that, but it definitely is 85,000. I've never used these before. They're brand new. Over the years, I've usually spent four to 5,000 but this year, I think I've kept it back to just over 3,000. At first, Phil just wired it all together, plugging everything in, hoping for the best. And then one year, we had a fire in the roof. Well, that was it. From then on, I went professional. I only got electricians in. I got no power. Your box is off. Well, I'll just switch it on, OK? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. We now have 12 power boards. Each power board has 30 plugs in it, and half of them then got their own switches on them. Phil, he doesn't know what he's doing. He thinks he knows what he's doing. But every year, yeah, yeah we just keep going. <laughs> so what makes Phil so mad about Christmas? Well, I'm born on Christmas Day, and I always remember going to shop fronts looking at just Christmas displays. That's why when you walk into my yard, you'll see all the toys, all the trains. We have lots of toys. Every toy and everything you can think of, we have. I think I do have an addiction to lights and a Christmas spirit addiction. I don't know. Phil's power bill used to skyrocket over Christmas to $400 a month. My electricity bill used to be the highest in Canberra. Now I've gone solar. Trust me. It's the way to go. The money he saves goes to the Eden Monaro Cancer Support Group. It's switch on night and thousands of Canberrans queue up to wander through Phil's Wonderland. Everyone ready? Yeah! OK, lights on. It's been getting bigger and bigger and bigger 
every year and honestly the work the guys have done has just been amazing. My favourite part is Santa falling down the chimney. The people that come through and look at our lights, the word we keep hearing is wow. You can't count how many wows you hear. Every year, it just keeps getting better, better, better. The best light display, as far as I'm concerned, is mine. Oh, I'll never give it up, not while the kids are enjoying it so much. OK, the North Pole is officially open. There's plenty more light madness to come. I think I've spent at least 7,000 on Christmas decorations. You don't go on holidays anymore. Yes, you can see from the air, you have planes coming over all the time. And on 2nd Street, how do you create a winter wonderland at 30 degrees? Get a bit of that snow and just try it on the camellia now. In the weeks before Christmas, Aussies put on their biggest show of the year. A quarter of a million front yards light up with true blue Aussie genius. And one of the longest running traditions is here on 2nd Street in Sydney, where the whole street is gearing up for its biggest switch on ever. From day one of light up, when you're walking out to your street, you see all your neighbours lit up. You feel pretty sad if you don't have your own set up. We wouldn't no. be allowed not to do one. We'd have to do one or we'll have the kids chasing us. No, the grandkids love taking part in it. <laughs> Brian Sharrick is one of the many Christmas lights addicts busy working to bring Second Street alive. Uh, one set to go. It's about just making your house look nice and we then promoted that to other people because everyone just loves the spirit of Christmas. Brian reckons he'll need at least 200 strands of LEDs to make an impact. So this is the hardest part these days, getting the tangles out of the wiring. If you're thinking 200 strands is a bit over the top, that's not the half of it. All working. Excellent. That's what we want to see. See, this year Brian has a willing helper. His new wife, Jen. What's your planning, hun? Well, I'm determined to get my Christmas tree in the garden, honey. Yep, Jen married into the mother of all Christmas clubs and she's determined to make her mark. A lot of the neighbours have been here for a very, very long time and I'm sort of a newcomer, so it was one way of me being involved with the, with the neighbourhood and being part of it. Keeping up with the Joneses won't be easy. Big shopping list, honey. <laughs> big shopping list. Yeah, all good. Big budget, big <coughs> shopping list. All good, yeah. <laughs> When neighbour Deb Lowe found her new husband, Mal, she laid down the rules. I actually said, look, I can't go out with anyone that's not into Christmas, you know. This is a really important part of my life. She's sorting through her prized decorations. And so this is always the fun part of year when I find things that I haven't seen all year and I put them out. I don't know why, but I'm just super crazy about this type of decoration. Snowmans are some of my favourites. Deb has collected over 100 exotic baubles from every corner of the world. It's a bit like a treasure chest of, of memories and dreams. Each year has got bigger and better, basically. <laughs> I started off slow and then as the years go by, you know, you add to your collection. Oh, I just love the fact that they're all so shiny and bright. The detail is really good. Soon Deb will be on the hunt for new ways to feed her Christmas habit. She can't resist the new temptation shipped in every year from factories in Asia. She's not alone. We Aussies fork out more than $20 million in Christmas lights each year. And four times that on our other Christmas decorations. Oh my gosh, look at it in here. <laughs> you can spend a whole day in a Christmas warehouse like this. 
Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Which is just what Brian and Jen plan to do. Oh, and there's my tree. Yeah, look at that's that. That's the tree I want for the garden. That'll yeah, go that. perfectly in our that's, garden. That's identical to the one you've got on the veranda. It is. With the presents, yeah. it'll be perfect. Yeah, yeah just a perfect. bigger version. That's all. First item. <laughs> so, so you're actually looking for new things that people don't have. Yeah, what's the kind that's of... That's exactly right. Oh, no, come on. Show me. Show <laughs> me. Yeah, let's have a look. Have a look. <laughs> Jen's decided Brian's lights need a serious review. The shopping is one of my favourite parts of um, the whole Christmas light process. <laughs> I'm like a little kid in a candy store. Merry Christmas, everybody! You notice that the men are actually trailing you here? Yes, I noticed that. <laughs> there is a very good reason. It's all about me and what I'm going to buy. <laughs> I thought I love Christmas shopping, but Jen... I have rights to buy whatever I like for Christmas lights. <laughs> Do I have a budget to spend? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, I, I, you know, I use discretion, um, but, I do, you know, I want to make our place look lovely and so I spend as much as appropriate. Every year, new gimmicks roll out of the Christmas factories. <laughs> Bobbing head reindeer, so last year. Trains from the North Pole, bar humbug. Now this looks really interesting. And I have to rewrite under his... No, you don't necessarily. <laughs> Fantastic. There's just so much out there. The shop is definitely dangerous. What makes me excited is something different. Jen wants a modern look to overhaul Brian's traditional theme. New wife, new life. Okay, I think we've found my dream mum purchase. <laughs> um, these two lamps, they would look lovely. Yeah. And just, um, you know, help with these stars as well. Yeah, so yeah exactly right. In the, uh, in the garden, so that would be perfect. What do you think, Matty? No, I like it a look lot. Good. Yeah. Hang on. So what's the price of a lap around Santa's playground? Price is four oh four sixty five. Lovely, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll accept that. <laughs> Not bad for the first shopping trip of the season. We've done, we've done well. Yeah, actually, we did really well, yeah. My girls have grown up and moved on, but they still like coming back home to see the Christmas lights. Love you, Michaela. This Aussie street relies on everyone going all out to get the visitors. The boys are inside fixing up little bits and pieces while we're out here decorating. They keep looking for new ways to wow the crowds and bring Christmas cheer in true Aussie fashion. Lawrence over the road encourages us all to do it and be on time. Yeah, the bells will be right up in the, in the pitch and the snowflake will be dripping underneath it. But some years are more successful than others. Ask Mel and Deb. <laughs> <laughs> there was one year that I went very colourful, bright blue lights, and um, someone mentioned that I went to the next level of tacklessness. <laughs> no, tacking, tackiness. Tackiness, tackiness. <laughs> they went within a week. Yeah. They were gone. It's snowing outside. So this year, there's a new plan. I was just listening to Christmas music and the idea of white Christmas. It's snowing outside, it must be Christmas. I did think to myself, oh my god, that's that's really pretty. It's like a winter wonderland. <laughs> so how do you make a white Christmas in Australia? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> it's quite heavy, thankfully. <laughs> Plastic snow. <laughs> now that's a first for Second Street. So it worked out um, $100 for 10 kilos. For 10 kilos. So I bought two, uh, t uh, 20 kilo. It will be for it'll, it'll be an experiment that may be successful or next year in the trash. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite a winter wonderland, but for a baking hot summer Christmas, it might just do the trick. Why don't you get a bit of that snow and just try it on the camellia now? Oh, OK, so it's actually going to... Mm. I do have a problem with doing snow. <laughs> In Australian summer, it'd be perfect little snowmen, actually, wouldn't they? It's waste not what not for street newcomer Megan. Obviously, I'll have to find out how much they are. Her budget is 50 bucks for the whole house. I'm a great believer in, in the whole reuse, recycle, um, try not to get too many core cool materials that we won't really use again. So she's at the second-hand store with her shopping list. 
I think we'll go more with angels and ribbons and, and silver, a lot of tinsel and things like that, just to make it look pretty. Well, this is what I'm thinking for the angels, that you can sort of cut them out, create some wings. But how will DIY stack up in Second Street? Now the joy of opening up our prezzies. Brian and Jen have just spent eight times Megan's budget in one spree. We did very well this morning. We've got some great additions to our lights, so I'm very, very pleased with what we've got. Okay. Here we go. Another bit. Well, then that must be that bit. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, isn't it pretty? That's cute. Oh, look oh, at that. Oh, that's pretty. That is going to look so yeah. nice in the dark. It is, isn't it? That'll just look pretty. It's just going to yeah. light up the area. I've been playing with the idea of dressing up some of the kids' dolls so that they're like a little nativity scene. So I'll have to um, get some Hessian sacks for their clothes, I think. Individuality is celebrated on 2nd Street. But come switch on, bigger and brighter might be better. Aussie spent an estimated $100 million on Christmas decorations each year. It's a monster business. There's but if you're looking for oversized Christmas lights, check out Victoria. In Mickleham, just outside Melbourne, one single amazing house provides enough Christmas cheer to light up the neighbourhood for a staggering $70,000. Their giant Santa is three storeys high. We're so big now, we... I've got to get cherry pickers to put things up. I never used to do that and one of 12 fantastic light sculptures so massive, airline passengers can catch the show as they fly over. We were lucky enough last year to have a couple of pilots come through very late at night, and they did tell us that, yes, you can see it as they're flying over the top of us. It's Wayne Weddingslow's recreation of the North Pole. You have so much sad through the year, with dramas happening everywhere. Somewhere's got to be happy. So we make this the North Pole, and it's the happiest place to be. First thing you see is a Santa, 10 metres high. And you've got Santa's cave, where you've got Santa's chair, and we've got other parts where you walk. Once you walk into Santa's cave, you can walk out the other side, and you can see more lights. You've got Santa and a tractor, Santa and fire engines, and Mrs. Claus riding a motorbike. The light display, it can take you 10 minutes to walk through, or it can take you four hours to walk through. It's hard to believe now, but the display actually started quite humbly back in 1991. I'd say definitely, yes. Over the years, it has become an obsession. If there's a Christmas shop around, Jan's got to go visiting. And it doesn't matter where I go, I find a Christmas shop. Scott, put it on top of that rope and I'll sit on it then. I think I've spent at least 70000 Christmas decorations. We haven't gone without a lot, but we do go without holidays. We don't go on holidays anymore. We keep all our decorations in here, as you can see. You've got Santa Claus, just, just his hand. That's just Santa Claus' hand. Each Christmas, a small army of friends and neighbours gets to work. All very smoothly. Everyone knows who's doing what, and everyone loves coming in to do it now. I'm getting more people and more people want the help. Yes, well, that's my One more piece to go, and he's up. Wayne's lost track of how many lights he has. He stopped counting after 50,000. They run 2.5 kilometres of power cords, hook up 28 different power boards, and plug in 50 double adapters. Everything you put up, you've got to test. Make sure it works. Which means it's too big to run off the local grid. They need their own power station. I can run everything off the generator now and I can go inside and I can still boil the kettle. So what makes someone this obsessed? When I was um, 10 years of age, mum and dad passed away. And um, I lost a lot of Christmas time because I was put into a home. Now I want the happiness to come back into it again and see the kids smile, that's, that's my life now. If you can make the kids happy, it's a good place to be. The money raised goes to the Royal Melbourne Children's Hospital. 
Uh, the Royal Children's Hospital means a lot to me because they've helped me gain hearing back in both my ears because it was slowly going down and they said I was going to go deaf. And yeah, I just collect donations to give back to them so they can buy more equipment. After a whole week of preparation, it's the big switch on night. OK, the North Pole is officially open. open. Welcome. Hi, guys. Luckily, the wedding slows have parking for 200 cars. Hello, how are Take you? They get visitors by the thousands. We're going to have the big countdown now. Here we go. 10, 10 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Four weeks of the year, Victoria has its own North Pole. It's the joy that it brings other people. To see the kids' faces light up, but it's not just the little kids either. We have a great range of people come through, different age groups, and everybody is just amazed. I think it brings people together. <laughs> Jan and Wayne hope they can pass their legacy on to the next generation. When I get older, I hope my kids will take it over. I'll be still there backing them and I'll be still saying how to do it, even though I'm in a wheelchair. We've got plenty more Aussie imagination coming up. Milk bottles are there to diffuse the light so that you get a nice glow coming out. Yeah. And on 2nd Street, the pressure's really building. You can't imagine the kids' faces when they walk past the place and see it. No one wants the worst house. You want to make sure you look good and people don't laugh at our pathetic effort. As we count down to Christmas Day, Aussie streets are positively glowing. No matter where you live, there's always a neighbourhood trying to light up a smile on every passing face. And bus driver Peter Rose sees a lot of passing faces. You've really got to make sure that it's tight, that it's secure, and it's in no way they're going to move, because it's on there for six weeks. Five years ago, Peter asked his depot manager if he could spruce up his ride for Christmas. My idea of a bit of tinsel and his idea of a bit of tinsel were completely different. Uh, so I probably went a little bit overboard. And it may not seem like it, but there's about 300 metres of tinsel. And there's over 300 lights. Each year, Peter and his son, Ben, transform an everyday city commute into a magical tour. You ready for those to be tested? Yeah, Lights. switch them on and I'll check them for you. Far E on? Yeah. Front aisle? Yes. Brave light? Yeah, brave lights. Good, done. All done, excellent. Yep. Good. You see the happiness of people. You don't ever have a grumpy passenger. And every penny raised goes to the Westmead Children's Hospital. 3150, thank you very much. Oh. Cheers, much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now that's worth the bus fare. <laughs> Meanwhile, back on 2nd Street in Sydney, there's just three days to switch on. We love Second Street and all the lights because it's fun walking around the street and meeting everybody you don't see from year to year. Uh, it took me to set up one month every Saturday I work, from 7 up to 12 at night. You have secret weapons. Oh, they unveiled that. on the night. <laughs> all the neighbours work together to turn it into one of Australia's most spectacular Christmas streets. But some Second Streeters are better organised than others. This year we got practically all new lights. They say you should test your lights before you even put them up, but we were too eager to get them up, so we haven't tested anything yet. 
Abby Winspear and her mum Susie are trying to get ahead for the first time in 10 years. Christmas is my favourite time of the year. It's, it's better than birthdays, it's better than chocolate. We usually end up putting the lights up on the day of the light up night. We try to get organised beforehand, but it just never happens. These antlers are somewhere. They don't have a big budget, so each year getting stuff down from the roof is a bit of a lottery. We might... I think that yeah. would be that. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking really old and rusty and half the lights don't work. Can you bear to put Rudolph in the bin? Yes, it's a shame. Chuck them out. We don't own a ladder. <laughs> we need a ladder to put things up. And we just borrow Devon Nails. Oh, or Brian and Jen. We leap the fence. <laughs> or, or lorries. Or somebody's. So you can see this is endless. Abby and Susie might be struggling, but on this street, there's no avoiding the Christmas light up. I've got a headache already. <laughs> Although the pressure's on in 2nd Street, the good news is there's plenty of help. Here we are. First time as Megan and Andrew are calling on reinforcements. I don't think anything can prepare you for <laughs> it and the number of lights. Oh, what are we in for? This is our 10th Christmas here. And we've done it every year. Because we live next door to Lawrence, so you get a lot of help. Neighbours Joe and Sharon remember how daunting it was when they started. The scale is like nothing I could have ever imagined at hundreds of people every night. It was a little bit off-putting at first. But I really need some help. <laughs> we quickly became aware of what a big deal it really is. Megan had big eco plans and a budget of just 50 bucks. Yeah, so that's what we have to do. I used my cutting out skills for many years. <laughs> Whatever we do, as long as we do something, uh, and when we've um, put a bit of heart and soul into it, I think it'll, it'll be great. But as the big day gets closer, Megan's starting to have reservations. The whole idea of Christmas lights is the spectacle and the illumination. And without having the lights, um, that is probably my only fear that everything else we try and, and do will be lost. Megan's right to worry. Once you're hooked into Christmas lights Aussie style, there's no going back. Things just get bigger, bolder and brighter. Throw in some techno wizardry and you might just get a showstopper like this one in Queensland. If you see lights flashing in perfect sync to music in the Cinnamon Park area of Brisbane this Christmas, you'd be forgiven for thinking it's a teenage rave. But no, this is the dedication of a retired engineer. It's been referred to as CLAP, uh, Christmas Light Addiction Problem. Just checking these connections. There are quite a number of us in Australia and around the world that suffer from this addiction. I think I've solved that problem. Jeff Harvey's obsession has culminated in a display of more than 80,000 lights all synced perfectly to music via a mind-boggling computer program. Setting the lights up to the music is essentially just like filling in a big spreadsheet. Each light connects to a particular computer channel. And then for each of the channels, you can turn lights on, turn them off, fade them up and down or twinkle them. I guess we call it in the trade a blinky flashy system. I can't resist going over for his big switch on. Uh, lots of wires, as you can see. Controls the spinners. No doubt he's an engineer. Every cable has its place. I started getting into lights to impress the grandkids. I do it now for my own satisfaction. Some of the kids really love it. For the rest of you Aussie light fanatics, here's the stats. 170 man hours. Programming 500 computer channels through 10 kilometres of cable to synchronise 80,000 lights. This one controls the mega tree. Mega, mega tree, what a name. Yeah, <laughs> mega tree. It's got about 20,000 lights. The milk bottles are there to diffuse the light so that you get a nice sort of glow coming out rather than some bright sparks. Bringing Christmas cheer to the community is a big bonus. But now it's a major tribute to his late wife, Jenny, 
who passed away earlier this year. Since my wife passed away, I've taken a very different approach to money. The costs associated with doing the display are several thousand a year, probably. This is my hobby. Um, I don't count the cost. I can't wait to see yeah. this switched on. Oh, it's... I think it's brilliant. Of course you do. <laughs> Give yourself a wrap, <laughs> I would. You spent enough hours doing it. Right, -o, come on, let's go. All Jeff's hard work is about to pay off. So what does happen now? Well, you know, the computer turns them on at the appropriate time. There yeah! you go. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, Hollywood. All Jeff's time, money and know-how brings so much joy to his community. Family, Christmas, beautiful lights. Congratulations, mate. What Thank a fantastic you. job. You. The Christmas cheer's spreading up and down the country. Coming up, there's check-out shock on 2nd Street. Today's grand total is $2,313. <gasps> And they're not the only ones spending up big. <laughs> Anything we see that looks different, we just tend to go and buy it. And we discover the secrets behind Australia's most iconic Christmas display. So just imagine going to bed at night thinking two or three million people have seen your puppetry. All over Australia, we're counting down to our own special brand of Christmas. It's hot, sunny and oh, so bright. When you ask an Aussie what's for Christmas, they say you bet. On 2nd Street, Sydney neighbours have put on a monster show for the last 23 years. They're getting ready for their biggest ever switch on no matter what it costs. There's no cost on Christmas lights. You can't put it that way. It's Christmas spirit. You can't imagine the kids' faces when they walk past the place and see it. This year, actually, we've put up a whole lot of new stuff. Just for this year, that two and a half thousand dollars. It's also a chance for the street's young talent to shine. Well, we're definitely looking forward to Christmas this year, because yeah. like Christmas is a very special thing for this street. We um, all enjoy it. The feeling in our community at the moment is we're just getting excited about the build up to Christmas. Four, one, two, three, four. What Christmas Street Spectacular would be complete without the kids' band? I used to just play the recorder with Miles and it was fairly small, but then we kind of asked some friends and it became a big thing. That was good. Jan is another new addition. Although husband Brian's been here for 23 years, Jen is already making an impression. Um, as you can see, I'm going very well. <laughs> uh, I think that one just broke. The first year I was here, I was a bit embarrassed with the lights. <laughs> so um, it was time for a bit of a woman's touch. And I just said to Brian, right, I'm starting from scratch. Give me a credit card and off I go. <laughs> Jen's a pretty special lady. She quickly met a lot of the neighbours and uh, that was quite successful. They, uh, they all put up with her. <laughs> They're beautiful. Since Jen's moved to Second Street, her sister Kath has noticed a big change. She's really happy here. Very happy for her that <laughs> she's found happiness on Second Street. And I think a lot of it has to do with the neighbourhood and the people, and Brian, of course. But a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's such a strong community here. Oh, one more, Sophia. You're the lucky one to put the last one on. Where do you want to put it? I'm happy that Anna Jo moved into Second Street because it's 
a lot more interesting and cheerful than the other state. That needs to go there, Abby. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, kids. That was great. It looks fantastic, doesn't it? I think we've got the best tree in the street. What do you think? Yep, I'm on it. Got it? Yep, got it. OK, drill. Community is contagious here, and one bloke is often the source of infection. Laurie McGinty. Beautiful. He's pretty much the caretaker of the whole street all year round. What we'll do is put it behind Santa first. Let's do it. Laurie's a very caring and uh, kind guy. He does a lot for the neighbourhood, for other people. Up you go. I got the ladder. And that's on all levels. You know, we, we have neighbours who come and knock on doors. We have neighbours who have keys to homes. What will happen, the light-up will be on the 19th. Same drill as, as usual with the barbecue and friends over and all that fun. And I think that's about community, that's about caring for people, rather than being stuck behind four walls and not worrying what's happening on the outside. Nothing would keep Mel and Deb indoors at Christmas. Wow. wow. They're creating a winter wonderland theme. The shop is beautiful. Thank you. And now they're hitting the shops for something special. Ah, and the Santa bags. The Santa bags are beautiful. <gasps> They've got baubles over them. They're in the market for a new tree for Deb's prize decorations. I can't believe oh. it. It's just fantastic. fantastic. And they want a second opinion from Master of Ceremonies, Laurie. That tree would look perfect in your place. It's just beautiful. I could spend all day here, Charlie. There's so much stuff here that I could use, but it's just a matter of finding the right spot for it. Oh, oh that's pretty oh, well. I have yes. to have that. Mal's been accused of being tacky in the past, so he's keeping it simple. So I'm looking for bells, and again, more silver and white ornaments, just to give it more sparkle, I suppose, more of a white Christmas effect. Something like that would be perfect. perfect. I'm, not, I'm not sure where you'd put them in the garden. Nice. Either side. We don't have children, so we don't have the expense of children, so we do have a little bit more disposable income. So this is our Christmas toilet paper. We have a bit of a selection. Yeah. We usually have more, but we've been wiped out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we never start out with a budget. Mm. We, we always know we'll probably spend maybe up to $500, but um, some years we've gone over that and some years we've not. This is a half tree, so you need to have a wall for it to go. It does need to be supported. Well, it would just mean that all the decorations we'll were moving on inside, yeah. So it is a beautiful tree. Right. Like, I, the, I love the you feeling like the of feel, the, yeah. yeah. When you've got quality decorations or family heirlooms that you hang each year, you want to look after them. Well, what do you think? I'm, oh, I'm thinking we should I, I think probably get it. It's the first time for Megan and Andrew. I like these stars too, they're gorgeous. They were going all out to recycle and spend just 50 bucks. Like, would they be okay outside? But they're starting to bow to pressure. When we think about our lights, the whole point of a spectacular is as many as you can get on. So, <laughs> thank you. So we're looking to get as many lights as we possibly can. I really like this angel. Yeah, we'll get that one. Yeah, that's, great. That's, that's gorgeous. They're still shopping for second hand, but they've decided to up their budget a little. <gasps> Lights. Here we go. They're gorgeous, actually. The main challenge for us, I think, will be justifying spending money on buying a lot of lights. I think we've only got one string of lights so far, and that was for our Christmas tree. These would work really well in the garden, wouldn't they? Mm. You know, you want to make sure you look good and people don't laugh at our pathetic effort. Yeah. <laughs> How are you going? Good. That's good. Second Street has another convert. I've only got one, that's just oh, for Claire. Okay. But we've got the lights. Yep. So how much are these, do you know? Well, I've, I blew my budget a little bit. I uh, spent $75. But I got eight sets of lights, which is awesome. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Well, we have got... Um, this is the most beautiful suit that we have. Mal, Deb and Laurie haven't finished Christmas shopping. There's a second street tradition that needs updating. Size-wise, yes, I think you'll be perfect. This okay. is the um, size that should fit you. Extra, extra large. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the perfect frame for Santa. Mal is second street Santa. I think I sort of got nominated for it because of my larger size, I suppose you Natural call. build. Natural for Santa. build, yes. 
last year, well, we saw more than you really had. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for a new suit. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! <laughs> Make that two new suits. Laurie said to me the other week, wouldn't it be great if we had a Mrs Claus? And I said, yes, I think that's a good idea. And he goes, and you'd be it. It's just a new idea. Yeah. And we'll probably, it'll be probably become a every year thing now. Yeah, Especially so. if we're going to invest in a Santa Mrs Claus suit. <laughs> Today's grand total is $2,313. Is, is that all? And 15 cents. <laughs> That's our biggest spend that, that, ever. That's our biggest spend, yeah, truly. Thank you. Bye. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe yes. how much we've bought. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. It's just been amazing. What an amazing shop. Shopping is so much a part of Christmas. Aussies will spend around $40 billion this year on all the trimmings. But there's one shopping tradition that doesn't cost us a cent. Christmas window displays. The story behind Australia's most famous display starts with a little boy who once thought he'd never speak. The year was 1951 and David Poulton's stammer made him an easy target for playground bullies. So he became mute. From the ages of five to seven, he said nothing. Then I had a teacher put a puppet on my hand and I spoke through this puppet. Changed my life. It always gave me confidence. That little boy grew into one of Australia's most revered puppet masters. One of the many strings to his bow is the creation of Christmas displays for department store windows around the world. I love the expression and I love what you can do to people. You can lift people, you can make them happy. So we'll make the loop Rolls. there yeah. and we'll use only one of these on the base. Yep, yep. Minus the largest balls, perfect. Hidden away in his Noosa workshop, David conjures up Christmas magic. This year he's creating six window displays with a Christmas carol theme for David Jones in Sydney. It would have to be about three million people see the windows. So just imagine going to bed at night thinking two or three million people have seen your puppetry. The job is so big, it takes ten people six months to pull it off. You see, it's not just handcrafting each character. It's engineering hundreds of automatic puppet actions with electric motors and kilometres of string. We tie about 10,000 knots a year and we buy our nylon in a 10 kilometre spoil. So the local fishing shop does wonder what we do with the nylon. And we operate them on a camshaft and on this shaft we attach cam wheels and the puppet is choreographed with this string and the cam is cut into the shape we need. And if that's not complicated enough, once David's team get it working here, this, I can assure you, saves hours of tangles. They have to pull it apart and truck the whole thing a thousand kilometres to Sydney. We can't control traffic, we can't control accidents, we can't control floods. That's the part where I'm most nervous. If anything breaks on the road, it could be disastrous. We'll catch up with David later. Hope everything gets there in one piece. Let's hope we have a good journey. There's something about puppets and Christmas lights that go together. And if you're anything like the Geike family in Ermington, you can never have enough of both. We moved in here about 10 years ago. Uh, since then, we've just got bigger to the point we've just about covered every spot we can cover within the house now. At last count, they'd collected more than 200 characters and objects for their playful display. Anything we see that looks different or 
more appealing, then uh, then we go and we just tend to go and buy it. So that would look good here and there and that would make people happy and that would enhance our display. Hello, Mrs Claude. We have a lot of the fun stuff on the lawn and in the carport we have all the nativity. So that's all there for people that just like to see the holy stuff. But the craziest thing is they have to bring it inside every night for six weeks. We're out there till 11.30 nearly every night. Then we have to bring all the toys back in because John has to bring his car in then, you see? And we bring, bring them in at night and we bring them out every, every night then. But does that put off John and Mary? Not on your life. Weeks of training. I have a sneaking suspicion that I have far more fun than everybody looking over the fence. It's just a lovely feeling to, to have so many people be looking over our front fence at our display. John reckons his display might even rekindle the Christmas spirit in any bar humbugs who might pass by. I think those people who are prepared to knock Christmas um, really do need to take a good, hard look at themselves. Well done, guys. Well done. Next, a last-minute race to meet Showtime. This is win. You wish you lost a bit of weight. And the search for perfection on Second Street. Light it up, honey. Oh, my goodness. The porch is worrying me. It looks a bit too light. Christmas is nearly here, and we Aussies are going all out for world domination in our new national sport, Christmas lights. Everyone's searching for illuminating inspiration. And for some, the light bulb goes on in the middle of the night. I can't sleep at night, thinking about what I can do. And then I asked my wife, would this be all right or that be all right? And she said, oh, yeah, it might be a good idea. And I get the ideas of placemats, Christmas cards, Christmas paper, anything. Peter Overton from Quakers Hill works his Christmas magic in wood. Characters, sleighs, houses, you name it. And he doesn't think about the cost. If I want something, I'll get it. So I, I never budget. My wife goes a crook, but I don't take much notice of that. <laughs> Yeah, there's something about Christmas lights that brings out our creativity at the end of every year. Or if you're as fanatical as Peter, all year round. I start thinking about what I'm going to do for the next year straight after I pull them down. Imaginations have been working overtime in Second Street too. Looking forward to showing off the lights. But you'll come from this one, Miles, and jump up here. I'm going to be an elf wearing an elf costume. We want the elves to have fun and enjoy it and help Santa along the way. There will be a surprise in the night, so stay tuned. It's one of the biggest and longest running displays in Australia. We had a late start this year, but uh, we've probably got a, an hour or so to go, and we're done. Everything should be right. They worked last night. So we hope they all work tonight. <laughs> with our fingers crossed. <laughs> All the neighbours in 60-plus houses are wiring up their own designs. Now we can put, start putting the baubles on, Kate. Yeah. I would imagine there's going to be at least... 2,000 lights. This year, Mal and Deb are hatching a white Christmas to wow the crowds. In the true spirit of Christmas, everyone's roped in. This is Kate, my niece. Uh, she's been a great little helper over the years. Yeah, I've got it. She's helped out myself and she's also helped out Laurie as well, being an angel in Laurie's front yard. I like helping because it's really fun and I get to see what they're putting up before anybody else does. 
See, Dad, here it is this way, but you've got to unshred it. So and there's no escape for Deb's 80-year-old dad, Eddie. Dad has always helped with the Christmas lights from the very first year. Um, he's quite sprightly, so he's good at getting up the ladder. It's a long way from the humble decorations Eddie grew up with. All we ever had was streamers in the, in the lounge room, just streamers. You know these ones that just stretch out like concertina things? It's more, uh, more expensive today, that's for sure. Mal and Deb have spent more than $3,000 this year alone. <laughs> they look bizarre. <laughs> I don't know what to think of them. I don't know what to think of them. But is it enough? What do you think, Eddie? Honest opinion. No, it looks good. It looks good. You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Mal's still super sensitive about his display being called tacky one year. It looks a bit plain during the day, but once you light it all up, it looks good. Yeah, what have well, we got to get? We got licorice. And what's a Christmas spectacular without lollies? On Second Street, there's the great lolly giveaway to every single visitor. Oh. Beautiful. You can smell it. I think we started off with about 500 lollipops initially, uh, just as a nice thing to do. But that was a long time ago. It, that yeah, was quite a few years yeah, ago. Quite now. a few years yeah. ago. And right. last year we got through just over 7,000 lollipops. Whoa! Oh goodness, we've broken the record. Whoa. We now have 16,000 lollipops. It'll be right. It's all good. And these to share with people, of course, Brian. Yeah. You're right. Still got room. <laughs> Second Street does get thousands of visitors. And Laurie and Brian are happy to blow the budget. Oh, only that much. Just over a thousand. Yeah. That's all right. Christmas isn't about money, it's about doing something for someone else, it's about giving. And that's what Second Street and the whole idea of Second Street is totally about. Last box in, Brian, 16,000 lollipops. Let's Ready to uh, rock and roll. Let's go. The big switch on is tomorrow night, so... <laughs> Susie's 15-year-old daughter, Abby, has hatched a plan to catch up. We have a whole lot of people coming this afternoon to help us put up the lights and things. She's invited 35 people. She rang me at 12 o'clock today while I was at work. Busy as anything. Mum, will you kill me? So, Mum, are we going to have a PowerPoint in the mailbox? or are we... last, Like last time. Please don't be a spider, please don't be a spider. No, there's no spiders. Don't worry about spiders. Last time I opened it. We try to get organised beforehand, but it just never happens. So, so Mum, are you winding them round the tree or are we sticking them along the sides of the tree? There's hardly a plug wide or light hung without trusty Brian from up the road. Now, I was looking for these earlier. I know they're here somewhere. Uh, there you go. Thank there you go. Just what you need. Wonderful. The usual thing is come down and get the ladder first, uh, one of the two ladders, and then um, then there's all the bits and pieces that go along with it. But yeah. Second Street isn't the only place in a bit of a rush. Australia's biggest puppet show has just hit town, ready to be installed for its premiere. Might as well walk this straight out. And we'll put it on the footpath there. The big question on everyone's mind is, have all the pieces arrived here safely? Our voyage to Sydney in the nine-ton truck is the most risky part of the whole job. That's the part where I'm most nervous. But it appears that everything has arrived. I'm certainly not going to admit to any mistakes at this point. Puppet maestro David Poulton has spent half the year creating the intricate displays in his Noosa workshop. We're going to go this way in, you right? Like a giant puzzle, each bit has to be pieced back together perfectly. It fits, Nathan. Well done. And then squeezed into six cramped shop windows. This is a win. You wish you lost a bit of weight. One of the uh, exciting challenges of building windows are actually getting them in the windows. Push. So when we come to build the set, we always have to bear in mind the physical size of the componentry. It's tight, isn't it? And if that wasn't tricky enough... <laughs> I tell you. It has to be done covertly after dark to remain hidden from the public. There's a little bit of security involved in our windows. We want the opening day to be a surprise. 
With the hardware in place by morning, they can start unpacking the star attractions. The amazing thing is when you unwrap them, you think, oh, yeah, and you get quite excited seeing them again because they're like old friends. We physically rebuild them and we put the strings back on and we just keep testing and testing. No, oh, no, sir. In a precision-built display, nothing's left to chance. The movements move about 100,000 times in the six weeks, so that's quite a lot of pressure and strain on a string. So we use a fishing swivel so that the string always has a little bit of movement in it. You can make a puppet or a doll, but the secret is to bring it to life. That's when we get excited. David's Six Window Theatre's finally come to life. Hundreds of choreographed movements will run 24 hours a day for the next two months. Look at little kids' eyes and their grandparents' eyes. And that's the thrill of it. And now, it's just about Second Street's turn to shine. Laurie's finishing up his display, which hasn't changed all that much over the years. Uh, this is very much more a traditional uh, setup for Christmas for us. There's nothing really overly modern or outrageous. Laurie and his dad built this when his parents were alive. So it means more to him than any other decoration. They would love to see it continue and be sharing with the thousands of people who have come through the street. And I still put their picture on the front veranda, Richie, so they're, they're there in a different way. Light it up, honey. Three, two, one. Hope this works. Oh, my goodness. Look at the reindeer. The night before switch on, Mal and Deb are down to the final testing. Oh, my goodness. What do you think people are going to think, Kate? I think they think it's cool. The porch is worrying me. It looks a bit too light. Mm -hmm. It's it's eighty percent there. But it was never going to be perfect. So uh, Laurie and I are going shopping at eight a.m. tomorrow morning. <laughs> are you really going to yeah. go shopping? Oh my we've god! We've already turned up the time already. I think we've got enough. But but you can never have enough light. <laughs> When we come back, has Second Street got what it takes to be the Christmas street in Australia? our amazing country, we're switching on for Christmas. Nowhere does Christmas lights quite like we do. In scale, size or imagination. Hey everyone, ready? Yeah. In Canberra, Phil Jensen's collection is surely the most extensive in the land. If anyone could take it upon themselves to count. My favourite part is Santa falling down the chimney. I am definitely crazy, Phil. I enjoy putting the lights up every year. It has to be better and better all the time. And that's what I'm trying for. And does any front yard anywhere have a structure to match the sheer size of the Whittingslow's gigantic Father Christmas? We love the big Santa! I've had a lot of people that have come in from overseas. And I said, we don't do this over in England. No, so... I said, but we do it over here. While Jeff Harvey's computer-controlled Wonderland is truly mind-blowing. <laughs> it's so nice to actually see it working. <laughs> after, after all the slog. <laughs> 
Yes, we Aussies love lights and the spirit of Christmas they bring. Now, it's Second Street's turn to shine. Oh, that's really good. No, that's perfect. I like that there. That's fine. It's beautiful. We're nearly there, nearly there. Yeah, must be getting excited now. Oh, yeah, we are, we are. Look forward okay. to seeing you. Thank you. See you later. <laughs> Everyone's confident this will be their best display ever. Come nightfall, a crowd starts gathering at the top of the street near Laurie's place, where he and his parents started all this 23 years ago. Everyone's excelled themselves. Laurie's place is spectacular. It actually feels fantastic. Um, I, I, the number of people and houses lit up in this street is just uh, unbelievable. It's actually sharing that joy and that fun and that excitement amongst the, the mothers and fathers and the children. Um, and they take away something that costs nothing. What about Brian and his new wife? I think Jen's earned her place on Second Street. Oh, you've done an amazing job. What do you Looks guys great. reckon? Looks great. We just keep on getting better from last year. There's yeah. always something new, and Jen's input this year. You can see happy faces around the place, and the lights, you know, just looking at people's, you know, reactions to the lights, and the countdown was fantastic, you know, yeah. it was just a buzz. And this one, Susie and Abby blew me away. Not bad for a last minute job. Well, we did it. Amazingly. Really? Yeah. What time? <laughs> what time's the clock in? Um, 10 to 8, we finished. And how's this for a white Christmas? Even the snow worked out. Worth every dollar. You must feel so proud, do you? It's a fabulous street. Fabulous people, fabulous neighbours. I'm loving it. I'm really, really happy. It was great last year, but this year's an 11 out of 10. So congratulations, it's a great effort. And then there's the newest addition to Second Street. Not too shabby for a DIY budget job. Well, it was kind of thrust upon us. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't your choice. It wasn't our choice, but we got involved. Yeah, but you <laughs> so, did well too, I mean. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, oh, oh. And another new entry in the Second Street history, Mrs Claus. Hello. A big hug for you, little one. Oh. Merry Christmas, everyone. It's a picture Laurie's parents could never have imagined all those years ago. I reckon they'd be really proud of their street tonight and all the neighbours rejoicing in Christmas spirit. It all starts with one light. What an amazing night. An amazing street. An amazing Aussie Christmas. Wishing you all a Merry Christmas from the McGinty family, past and present. Merry Christmas from the Lawrence family. Merry Christmas from Jen and Brian. Merry Christmas from Dan and Mal. Can't